Google is no stranger when it comes to competing with itself. Whether it's Hangout, Salo, and Duo, or Google Play Music and YouTube, Google TV and Chromecast, Gmail and Inbox, or Android and Chrome OS. Now, the last one is quite intriguing. At a time where Google's kind of integrating Android and Chrome OS, bringing Android apps over to Chrome OS, there's another operating system being developed by Google, or rather Alphabet. This is Fuchsia OS. We've heard about it back in September, but at that time there wasn't even a GUI to talk about, but now we've got more information coming in. And in this video, let's take a look at that. Hey guys, Ash here from C4E Tech and let's get to it. So first things first, what sets Fuchsia OS apart from Android and Chrome OS? Well, it's not based on Linux. It uses Google's own microkernel called Magenta. Google documentation for Magenta also states it's for modern phones and modern personal computers with fast processors, non-trivial amounts of RAM with arbitrary peripherals doing open-ended computation. So what does that mean? Well, that leads us to question if this might be competition to Android and even maybe be a eventual successor. First, let's talk more about Fuchsia OS. The apps are written using Google's Flutter SDK. Flutter is a mobile SDK or software development kit for building apps for both iOS and Android from a single code base. Flutter apps are written on Dart and are supposed to perform better than ones on Android that are mostly written on Java. The system user interface for Fuchsia is called Armadillo and it looks to be a series of cards on top that represent apps and Google's own cards at the bottom. These are placeholders here, just a visual representation of how it might turn out to be. You can move the cards around, tap on them to launch a full screen version of the app, add them together to get multi-window-esque functions, even as many as four apps at once might be useful. At the center, you get your profile pic, Tapping on that shows your battery percent, Wi-Fi and cellular information. You can adjust brightness and volume, turn on the airplane mode, do not disturb orientation controls, kind of like quick settings. If you leave the screen, you can see the home button pop up below everywhere else. Tap anywhere and there you're back to your home screen. With the Google part of the cards, tapping on Ask Me Anything brings up a keyboard. This seems to be a custom Fuchsia keyboard with a nice dark theme. So why might there be a need for Fuchsia? Why is Google developing an alternative operating system to the most popular operating system today, Android? Well, whatever I'm gonna say past this point is pure speculation. Guys, we see specs being bumped up all the time on Android phones. Like literally just today, I shot a video on the new Snapdragon 630 and 660 mobile platforms. Technology keeps evolving. No, no matter what, when it comes to the speed and fluidity of the user interface, something like, say, iOS seems to always be a step ahead of Android. Every year we do speed tests of Android flagships against iPhones and every year we end up coming short. Now, maybe this is a way Google hopes to fix it in the future, more integration right at the uh, software level. Maybe it isn't. Anyway, another compelling reason might be OS updates. Now, when Android initially came up, to get manufacturers and carriers on board, Google made a bunch of decisions. Like, for example, an update goes through the manufacturer and in the United States carriers before ending up on the phone itself. This has led to a lot of issues throughout the years. And now with recent platforms like Android Wear, this isn't the case. Google keeps pushing out the updates. The control that a manufacturer has over the updates has gone down a lot. Now, as an upcoming operating system fighting for adoption, Google had to make these compromises initially. And maybe in a few years, by the time Fuchsia is ready, they might not have to make the same compromises. Now think about it. Let's draw a parallel. Even a brand like Samsung initially caved to carrier pressure and sold different variants of their phones like with the S2, the Skyrocket and whatnot uh, as carrier exclusives. And then when they managed to cut out carrier exclusives, they did still have to go with the carrier logo on their phones. But now that it's been years with something like the Galaxy S8, Samsung seems to have created enough demand and be a big enough name to avoid any kind of carrier customization. 
In the same vein of things, maybe Google feels they would be able to avoid manufacturer and carrier influence in their operating system, their updates and everything. Either way, given that the Fuchsia project started somewhere in early 2016, and going by the fact that Android was in development for five years before it hit consumer devices, maybe 2019 or 2020 is when we would we could theoretically see a phone with Fuchsia on it. That is, if it doesn't get scrapped. We've seen great concepts that we've all waited for get scrapped, so don't hold your breath on this one. That said, I am keeping my eyes peeled on this development because it sure would be cool to finally be done saying for customization, go with Android, for speed, go with iOS. You know, I'm kind of sick and tired of that line and just to be able to say this Google product's the best, period. Anyway guys, that's it for this quick video. I found Fuchsia OS interesting. If you didn't, if you hated this video, go ahead, vote it down. But if you did like it, go ahead, give the video a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button down below if you haven't already. If you have already subscribed, hit that bell icon to make sure you get notified each time a new video goes live here on C4 Retech. So that's it for now. Thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, this is Ash. You've been watching C4 Retech and I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye now.